God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was mean. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Welcome, welcome, welcome. In the last days, I am the host of the show, RPI, Radio Pastor Isaac. And I'm giving you biblical information coming from the Word of God. That's right, I'm live and on the studio tonight. Yes, I did hit it kind of early because I kept you know, a couple of things I want to do when I get home. And I'm just excited about being on the radio. Um, a uh, couple ways that you can listen to us. Let me get all these preliminaries out of the way because I have a very important topic that I want to talk about today. And, um, you know, it's it's something that I, I've been laying in my heart to talk about. But a couple ways you can listen to us. One way you can listen to us, if you're in the Aiken, South Carolina or Augusta, Georgia or Hesper, Georgia area, you're listening to one of the greatest radio station in the, in the world. That is WCC 99.9 M. That's right. I am live and in the studio. Today is February the 14th, 2020. My, mind, the time is going. But there's a couple ways you can listen to us. So if, you, if you're not in that local area, you can't hit us on Facebook or YouTube. That's right. I am live on Facebook and I'm hopefully I'm live on YouTube. We're going to have to see here in a minute. Been having, been having little issues with uh, YouTube a little bit. Apparently it's not showing that I am live, but I'll figure that part out and we'll get it straight away. But I am live on Facebook, those who are, uh, that does Facebook. And um, my Facebook name is Patrick Isaac. Of course, of course it's not RPI, <laughs> Radio Pastor Isaac. That's the name my brother, Pat Steve Hall, gave me. But it is Patrick Isaac, uh, P-A-T-R-I-C-K, Isaac, I-S-A-A-C. And I do keep my Facebook page worldwide. That's right, it is worldwide. And if you're listening tomorrow around about two o'clock, it is a rebroadcast. So I will not be live or anything like that. May even take a couple of questions or people that, you know, want to talk or feel like they have something they want to say or on their heart. You know, I might take some day to know how I get sometimes I get pretty excited and I just keep going and on and on like the energizer bunny rabbit. Just go on and on and on. But um, you know, we are on the Internet. Yes, we are. We are live on the internet. That is uh the way you get get us through the internet is WCC dot stream on dot FM. That is WCC dot stream on dot FM. And if you are an individual that is looking for being on the radio, oh man, this is the time that is best time to be on the radio since everybody's home and going through this uh pandemic, you know, uh we have a website that is a www.cwchrist.com. That is www.cwchrist.com. And that is our itinerary page. Tell you how the radio station started. And for those who are want to be live on the radio right now, 
the best time is to be live on the radio or Facebook or YouTube or any such way if you start wanting to share the gospel. But the radio is one of the best way because when they shut down YouTube and Facebook and all the other ones, this radio station is still going to be broadcasting the truth. So, yes, um, you can do that. And um, if you guys are interesting or anybody want to sponsor old RPI, you know, just hit the donate page and put RPI name down there and sponsor and all that good stuff. That'll be a blessing because it does take funds and money to run this radio station. Yes, we appreciate all the prayers and all the faith and everything, but it does take money to run this radio station. So, but listen, I uh, want to give a um, prayers out to everybody in Williston. For those you don't know and, and those who do know, but those who are out on Facebook and YouTube, uh, we had a, a tornado hit here um, yesterday. Actually, uh, around about 4.30 this morning, uh, I felt a whiff of that. Uh, uh, about Monday morning, about 4.30, wow, was the wind strong. Uh, pretty much worked the whole, woke up the whole family, including my kids. They was a little nervous and scared. Um, I think this one here was pretty intense. Really was not rocking my house, but the wind and everything that was hit, the wind was very strong. Brew trash cans and stuff all out in the middle of the road. Um, Williston, we praying for those guys. They did get hit. Uh, I think the death toll was a little over. Well, I'm not going to say because I don't know. I saw somebody put it there, but you don't know these days things are being accurate. So if anybody on Facebook knows the death toll in Williston, please uh, put it on my Facebook page and let me know. But they, we did have some people that died. And um, Williston is not a big area. It's a small area. Um, actually, that's where the tower of our radio station, where we broadcast back and forth. Praise God. Hallelujah. They got all that fixed. Give a shout out to the linemen. If you see your power, man, y'all really thank them because those guys in the midst of all that going, they got to get out there in their trucks two or three o'clock in the morning, go out there and get on power line. It's very dangerous. You know, we always talk about the police and firemen and, the, and you know, and give a, hey, those who are RNs or CNAs or, or LPNs, go out there and tell them guys, great job. You know, they're right now, these guys are on the front line. You know, some in the, in, in the nursing home that take care of the elderly, they are on the front line. These RN nurses that's trying to deal with it, go out there and, and thank those guys and say, you know, hey, uh, great job. Be a blessing under them, you know, buy their gas, buy them lunch, do something for them because these guys are really, really out here putting their life on the line, you know what I'm saying, trying to save lives, you know, and they got to go home to their families. I heard some stories, some of the nurses don't even go home because they don't want to affect their family. But, you know, these are hard things that they have to do. Um, you know, I know the police officer and the firemen and all that. They do a lot, but right now these nurses, RNs, CNAs, I want to give a shout out to them for they are really on the front lines and we pray that God protect them and keep them and then pray for their emotional side. You know, they're looking at seeing people dying, you know, seeing people that's that's um having breathing problem. Let's pray for them, you know. Let's 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 pray for them and, and ask and pray their strength, you know, because it's not natural for anybody to see death. It's not, you know, you don't look and you see a, a person dies and, and, and lead, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's hard. So let's pray for these guys. You know, I know we praying for, you know, uh, you know, the hospitals, you know, pray for these RN nurses, these doctors, they got to go in these, uh, these areas. Let's pray for them. You know, they, they need a lot more than, than other people and pray for family members. I just got a, um, a word that one of my uh, a, a close man friend died of COVID-19. So this stuff is serious. Um, some people are taking heart on others. Um, God is really doing some things in the midst of this. But I want to say this. Take this gum out my mouth because it sounds like I'm chewing tobacco or something, which I don't chew. But um, I do want to uh, say this. Um, really, really be praying for this country to repent. Um, that is one of the biggest things right now. Praying for these, this country, America. Matter of fact, pray for the whole wide world, but strictly America. Somebody get up and say, hey, we need to fall down and repent and get right. That is one of the biggest things that is needed. This is why everything is happening. Um, really be praying for New York that they repent. I have a brother in New York. Um, 
got a, a word for him that a lot of people are dying. Um, matter of fact, he told me there were 7,000 people that are dying and they have 18 wheelers out there with refrigerated and they, they got these wooden coffins and stuff. So this stuff is, is getting pretty intense. Um, Lord told me that he was going to judge a nation with his worth. As y'all know, New York, you know, the mayor and he done some things that is not very respectable unto Christ, you know, celebrating, killing babies. And I don't know if y'all remember, but they had put the, um, the Hindu God Kali on the empire state building. I don't know if y'all been in New York. I was born in New York. I didn't live there, but all my family, you know, all my family on my both side of my family's up there. And the statue of Liberty has, a um, they put up light shows and stuff sometimes. And they had did a, um, a Hindu God of Kali. Kali is the, is the God of death and destruction and put that up there. And when you do that, you open up spirits. Then you kill babies, you celebrate. So this is why New York in a position, but that don't mean we still can pray for them and ask them to repent, pray for all the way down from the leader, all the way down to the rich man, to the poor man to repent and get right. So God can let them, you know, go through this, this virus. And it's serious. You know, it is serious. Um, I do want to play a video um, before I get started. I know some of y'all, some people ask me, you always got to play something. Yes, I do. You know, I love David Wilkinson. I feel like David Wilkinson is all the things he said is so, so coming to light right now. So this one here is called, um, is David Wilkinson, is it justified by justi justification by faith, just justification by grace through faith. And take a listen to this for about five minutes while I um, do a couple of things here. And um, I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. No one in Paul's presence could pervert the gospel without his rising up and rebuking it. He said, there is one truth that we cannot give up on. And he said, I stake my life on it. And we dare not give in on this one issue. And that issue is that the gospel is simply this that the unrighteous are justified before God by faith alone in the victory of the cross of Jesus. They are not justified. They are not accepted by God through any human effort, through the works of the flesh of the law. This is the very heart of it. You give up on this point, you have no gospel left. Even if you could conquer every lust of your flesh, so that you could stand before a mirror and say, I have no lust, I, I, I have no temptation that I have not been able to conquer. My thoughts are clean. And you could stand honestly and say, I'm clean. God would not accept it. And you would be boasting and you become very proud and judgmental. That's what always happens when man wins it in his own power or thinks he's won it and sin is still lying at the door. You can be sure you're going to fall again anyhow. Because suddenly been on that merry-go-round, sin confess, sin confess. And that little short victory you got by your own willpower made you feel great and made you judge everybody around you. Why don't you have the power I have? Paul despised the hypocrisy of this perverted gospel. The Jews from Judea went everywhere teaching, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you can't be saved. Now, they are believers. They believe in Jesus Christ, but they're saying, you have to add the law. You have to add circumcision or you can't be saved. It's Jesus plus circumcision. They were mostly converted Pharisees, the Bible said, which believed. And they taught it was necessary to circumcise and to command them to keep the law. Yes, you're saved by faith. But then after you're saved by faith, you have to work this out. You come back under the law. And all these do's, all these don'ts, that you may please God. And Paul preached that all believers are purified one way only, and that is by faith, that through grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, but not by the works of the flesh. Now, Paul looked these Judaizers in the eye. He said, your legalism has robbed you of all love for hurting people. And folks, that's the problem with legalism. It is so judgmental, there's no love to it. There's no love whatsoever. He said, you hear of a new convert and you, you take off after him and you hound him. 
Beware of anybody comes to you trying to put a burden on you that you have to do something to get saved other than believing on Jesus Christ. They'll come to you and say, well, you can't be saved if you are not going to cut your hair a certain way. And if you're going to wear those things in your ears, and if you're going to have some paint on your face, and if you're going to wear, you're a woman and you're wearing trousers, they're going to come in. Now, I don't, I don't like to see women all looking like street people. And I believe that when you have the Holy Ghost and you really trust Jesus, you get into the Word and the Holy Ghost begins to teach you. These things begin to drop off. But you see, that has nothing to do with your salvation. Paul preached, we who worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, we have no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. And Paul goes on and says, no man tried in the flesh to please God more than I did. Nobody. This man of God could look in the eye of every circumcised Jew, every converted Hebrew, every believing Pharisee, every Jewish convert who's struggling and striving to please God by the deeds of the law. And he could say, I've been there, I've done that. He could say, go ahead and tell me about your burning desire to please God. Tell me about all the promises you made to God that you wouldn't do that evil thing again and you failed and went back and did it. Tell wow. me about your zeal to please Ooh. God with your long hours of study, your forced discipline, mm. your repetitious prayers. Tell me about the hypocrisy of looking holy on the outside but knowing personally inside that there's wickedness. Wow. Tell me about all your hopeless efforts, how you sweat, mm, mm, mm. trying to be righteous and good on your own power and strength. Man, I, woo, Lord, man, I just feel, I just feel the anointing of David Wilkerson because he has this, uh, 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 this anointing that's on him that bring conviction even to an unbeliever, even to a believer that think is right. And, and, and I, that's why I, I love listening to him. Man, I tell you, I, I wish I had the chance to actually meet him before he died in 2011. Because it's just something about when he preach, he and you can tell he's been spending time with God because even much as I love God and, and I'm following Christ, even it brings a conviction on me. You know what I'm saying? And I, I love listening to him. So, yes, I did start a little early today, guys. Um, Kind of want to, you know, spend get out and spend time with my family. But I want to talk about today, what I really want to talk about today is your faith and is your faith stronger than being persecuted or death that is one of the things that i i, I kind of want to hit on because you know i've been asked a lot of questions uh here lately and um let's let's do this before i, I go ahead and hit this let's let's read in, in the scripture because i want to talk about having faith and trusting in god even in situations where you feel like, you know, you know, some people say, oh, I have faith, but then when something happened, they back off. Well, me, I mean this to the end, despite it if my life is in danger. I, I, I love, I live, I breathe this gospel. I mean, this is something that I don't do just to get entertained. I don't, you know, I don't be, get on uh, Facebook or, or YouTube or being on the radio just to entertain you. No, I do not. I don't have no desire to entertain you, but I have desire to give you the truth in the gospel to save your life, build up your faith and keep you from dying, going to hell. When I do this, I don't do this to get great followers. I don't do this to show you that I, I have a spiritual muscle and I'm flexing it. No, I do this because I love God. And this is something that God has called me to do. The Bible said many are called, but few are chosen. Yes, God called a lot of people to preach the word, but only the chosen will goes out and give the truth. And right now we're living in the time where truth has to be the most important thing over how you feel. Truth in the word of God got to be, uh, uh, if I say this, will I offend people? Will, I, will the church people leave? You have to be able to have faith in God despite of. We, we done done enough of this shouting and falling all over the pulpit and 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 running around the church and speaking in tongues and 
and everybody is is just giving God praise. But what is good good is doing it like David Silken? David Silken. What if like David Wilson said, you do all this and you got so much hell and so much lies and deception in your body. You got to have enough faith to trust God. My faith right now, you know, and I was asked the question, well, you no, know, RPI, you don't never wear no face mask. You don't never wear no gloves. Um, every time I see you live, you don't have this on. You don't, you don't do this. You don't. Yes. Okay. RPI does not wear a face mask. And I don't wear gloves. Now I do wear gloves on the in, on my job, but that for another reason because the people I work with, we all share a loading truck, and everybody's hands ain't clean. And I'm when it comes to my hands, you know, I like that my hands to be clean. You know, even though it do have dirt on my fingernails, which I got now. But I'm a type of person. This is where my faith at. And I'm not saying I'm better than nobody. No, I would never say that. But my faith is in God and Yahweh. So, no, I do not wear a mask. I would not wear a mask. I would not put on gloves because this is where my faith is. Now, some people say, man, that's stupid. That's crazy. You you, you should follow. Yes, okay. If they tell me I have to put it on, then I do it. But for right now, my faith is in God. I don't care if a person in the, in the area have a, a coronavirus or, or have a flu. I will not do it. I remember the time when the emphysema flu came out and all my my sons uh at school their friends was getting sick and I, I remember at work guys was getting sick and i remember when i asked god i said god i don't you know what do i need to do 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 i need to god said if you trust me and believe in me and have faith in me then you have nothing to worry about he said even your children won't even, even have word about, but your faith has to be in me, not in yourself, not in your job, not in your feelings and emotion, not within Patrick, but through Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God. So when I understood that, I got the mask and I threw the mask away and I prayed over my children and I said, in Jesus name, you are covered. And I asked my children, do you believe God can cover you in the midst of this flu, emphysema flu? If you're not, then, okay, I will give you the face mask or whatever. My 16-year-old son, my 12-year-old son, well, he wasn't 16. He was 15 at the time. My 15, my 8-year-old, even my, my 7-year-old, 6-year-old said, we don't need it, Daddy, because we trust in God. And they went through that whole year. None of my children got the flu. None of them. I actually had a guy that had the flu coughed in my face and it was by accident and I remember feeling the spit going in my mouth oh my goodness that was the most disgusting thing but I did not get the flu now some of you said oh that's that's not bragging this is where my faith at RPI live die for this gospel I'm not telling you this to make you feel good or, or saying that I'm better I literally would die for this gospel if it caused me to take my life and want me to deny Christ, I would not deny Christ. I'm not saying this to put a feather in your hat. I'm just saying this where my faith is at. My faith is in God. It's not in, in my job. It's not in, in my home or my bank account or anything, but it's in God. So when you hear what I say, I would die for this gospel, this means I would truly die for this gospel. I don't wear faith. Man, because my faith is in God. And if I believe my God is a healer and a redeemer, then guess what? Then I, I would not die. But at the same time, I'm not foolish. I'm not going to walk up in the hospital or say, you know what? I'm going to go in there and lay hands on the people in the corona. No, I'm not going to do that unless God instruct me. If God instruct me, he said, I want you to go in the hospital and I want you to lay hand on them, the, the, the sick who have the sickness who have the coronavirus, who had the flu, and I want you to believe that they'll be healed, then I'll do it. I'm not afraid. I'm not scared of nothing. Oh, yes, I, I have certain fears or certain things or like that, but me saying, oh, I'm afraid. I am not afraid to die for Jesus. Listen, I, and I want y'all to understand this. RPI is not afraid to die for Christ. And this is not me bragging. It's not me putting a feather. This is where my faith is at. 
I live, like I said, I live, I breathe this gospel. If I'm not talking about the gospel, then I'm, I, it's, I'm praying about it. My children would tell you that what daddy doing? He over there talking to somebody about God. I talk, this is the thing that's in me. This is what God has called me to do. Everybody say, well, I, I, that, that's just stupid. Then fine. If I'm stupid, then let me be stupid. But listen, just because your faith ain't there, that don't mean that my faith had to be with y'all putting on masks. Now, if I if the job come to me and said, you know, well, our, uh, Patrick, we want you to put the mask on. This is required. Then guess what? I'm going to put it on because that's what my job require. But if they tell me you don't have to, I don't. And I don't look down on nobody who got a, a face mask on or who got gloves. That's their faith. You have to go where your faith is at. And if your faith is in God, but you feel like you want to wear a face mask glove, then fine. I'm not going to look down on you. I'm not going to, because that's where you at. And see, this is the problem. We got so many people saying they have faith in God, but then when a situation come, they throw in the towel. Oh, I ain't going to do that. That's crazy. But not me. When I say I stand on this word, that means I stand on this word. I'm not just saying it to put on show. Listen, I care less about Facebook, YouTube, or anything. All I care about is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to preach this. I'm going to teach this. And, I, and, 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 and I'm going to die doing this. This is, this is, my, this is call, my call. And I'm not saying this. Listen, I don't even have a church. I'm, a, I'm an elder of a church, but I don't have a church. You know where my church is? You know where my church at? It's on the street corner. My church is every Bilo's. My church is every Kroger's. My church is on my job. My church is on the street corner, 12th Street, 9th Street. My church is at my house. My church is, is, is at the mall. Anywhere that I preach the gospel, this is my church. I don't have to have a building to preach the gospel. I, 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 I'm a disciple for Jesus Christ, and I'm going to disciple for him to the day I live and to the day I die. I always said if I do get coronavirus, if I do get coronavirus, then guess what? Watch the miracle happen. Praise Jesus. I'm looking for God to heal me. But if I die, I'm going to be with the Lord. Either way, it's a win-win. So I'm not afraid. Yes, I, am, I use wisdom. Yes, I don't go out there and, and, and walk in the place. Like me, I can go into the darkest, deepest place where the gangs and shooting if God tell me to go in there, I'm not afraid. If I get an unction in my spirit and God say, I want you to go in the mix of all that gang stuff. I want you to go out there in the bloods or the crips. And I want, and, and I can have on a blue and red shirt. If God tell me to go in there, then I'm going in there. And I'm looking to save souls. I don't have to have a, a camera on my hand and look, take pictures. Look, look, look. No, I don't do that. I don't need to do that. The God I serve, he's getting the glory. I don't do stuff to glorify man. Or, or show man what I done. I don't do that. I do it to glorify Jesus Christ because I love him. And I want to do his will. And that's all I want to do. I told my children. And me and my wife, we sat down here. I think it was Thursday, Friday. And we told them, if somebody come and take us. If somebody come and take your daddy. And they put a gun in his head. And they said, if you don't deny Christ, we're going to kill your daddy. I would look my son directly in the eye and say, son, let me go and be with Jesus. You don't deny Christ. Oh, I will do that. This is how real I am. I'm not just talking. I'm not just saying this to put word. Listen, I care less about what I'm doing entertaining y'all. I'm just want to give y'all the truth. This is where I stand. You know, I told my children that and they looked at me. And they say, we know, daddy, we know. The same thing with your mama. If they put a gun in my child here, and they say, Patrick, if you don't deny Christ, we going to kill your child. I will look my child in the eye and I said, son, you going to be with the father. Now, as any father would do, I would get up there and try to fight him. Yes, I would do that. That's any father, anybody. I would try to grab the gun and they may end up killing us both. I don't know. But this is, this is where I'm at. This is where my faith is at. I, I don't care what, what people think. I told my children, you, daddy, is not going to denounce Christ. And that's hard. 
That's hard, man. How can you, and somebody say, how can you just let them kill you? You mean to tell me you won't deny your, uh, uh, God, even they put a gun to your child head? I say, no, I would not. Well, you can deny and then you listen. The, the father said, the Bible said, if you're ashamed of me, I'm ashamed of you. If you deny me, then I deny you. I am not going to deny Christ. Same thing with my wife. We talked about that the other night. Babe, she said, baby, if they put a gun to my head and want you to deny Christ, let me be the father. I said the same thing. Baby, if they take my life, they try to, if they say you deny Christ, they're going to kill me, let me die. This is having faith. This is where we at. We don't know the way things are. We are seeing the coming of Christ. This thing is set up for the Antichrist anytime. In the book of, of Revelation, I think it's the 20th chapter, they said they're going to make war with the saints. They're going to make war with the saints. That's what scripture said. So if you're not having faith in God and you say you got this $5 faith, and if they, if they, if it come that time, which can be any time between now, I don't know, it can be here today, next week, next year, 10 years from now, 50, I don't know. But if the Bible said they're going to make war with the saints, who are the saints? We are the saints. We are the believers. Then if your faith is not in God, then you're going to perish. And I don't look to perish. When you have this relationship with God, you don't need a half relationship. You need a full throttle power relationships. You need to have a relationship as, as, as Daniel did. I mean, as Rashad Meshach and Abednego. You know what? Let's read that right quick. We all know the story of Rashad Meshach and Abednego. We all know that the king made this golden image and we all know that in the midst of this golden image, they had to make a sacrifice before God. This, this was the thing that was going to happen. So Rashad and Meshach and Abednego, because they have a faithful, strong, knit, tight relationship with God, look what they said. And this is Daniel the third chapter and um, in and, and verse 16. And look what it said. And it said, uh, Shemrat, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer, your, answer you in that matter. But if so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fury furnace and he shall deliver us out of your hand O king but if not be known to you O king that we will not serve your God nor worship the golden image which you have set up then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fear and in the form of vanity and changed against Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego therefore he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace of one seven times more. They look what and oh, it was power. It said, "If so be our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from a burning furnace, but if He will not, but but He will not deliver us out of your hand, O King. But we will not listen. This is the mindset you need to have right now. Your mindset should be like not every time that." God is going to deliver you. The Bible said there's a time to live. There's a time to die. There's a time to cry. There's a time to smile. There's a time for happiness. Listen, there's going to be a time where God said, this is your time. So is your faith strong enough that if it's your time, you will have to die? Could you go through with this? If they grab, and much, listen, I love my children. I love my wife. And if they grab my wife and my children, and put us in a big pot and say, if you don't worship this Antichrist, because the Bible said that the Antichrist is going to make a great image and they're going to worship that image. And they say, if you don't do this, we're going to cut your head off. Could you have enough faith? Could you have that relationship? Could you love God? Could you be in the statue of God enough to say, I'm not going to serve it. If I believe to God that he's going to deliver us, if he don't, then I still won't serve it. Could you have enough faith to say that? That is the question. We all sit here and, and say what we ain't going to do, it, but could you do it? Could you have enough faith to trust your children to die for Christ? I know I do. I'd sit there and listen to my children say they would literally die for Christ. 
if it costs them their life. Why? Because I teach my babies, if you won't, don't die for nothing but Jesus Christ. I don't care about no car, no house, no home. Die for Christ. That is the biggest thing. And my children would tell you, I would die for Christ. And I have enough confidence and faith that they would do that. Why? Because I teach my babies to have faith in God. I teach my babies why we serve God. I teach my babies this is the only thing that's going to keep you, Christ. So I know what my children are going to do. I know what my wife is going to do. I know that somebody told me, said, well, you just, oh, you just think you better. No, I'm not thinking I'm better. Trust me, I am no better than the average drunk on the street. I'm just a humble man who loves God. And, and, and I will give my if everything. If it costs me food, home, I mean food and, and everything, I will give all. If God says, son, sell everything, get rid of your house, your car, your home, then I would do it. If he called me to do that. If he say, son, you're going to have to leave your family for three years. I would do that. Look what Rashad Misha and Abednego. Look what happened. He put them in the midst of the furnace. And King Nebuchadnezzar, and he said, and this is verse 25, he answered and said, Lo, I see men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and their form of their uh fourth, and their form, there's a fourth. It's like a son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fury, fire. And he spoke and said, uh, uh, Shemrat, Meshach, and Abednego, you serve of the most high God. Come forth and come here. And then Shemrat, Meshach, and Abednego came forth. And in the midst of the fire, and the prince, governors, and captains, and the king, counselors, being gathered together, saw those 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 men upon their bodies. The fire had no power, nor was the hair and the nor the hair on their head stench, neither their clothes changed, nor the smell of the fire has passed on them. This is what God looking for. He looking for a people that have so much faith in him, even in the midst of the king, the president. The, the emperor, in the midst of them, you still stand for him. These, this king was never, it was a great man. His, his, they was a great man. He was well known all around the, all around the area. And they know he was a great king. But in the midst of that, the three Hebrew wars were not afraid. They said, you may be a great king, but we got a king that owns the land you live in. We got a king that owns the hill in the back of your place. We got a king that the gold you, the image you made, he created that. The clothes you wear, he created that. The king, the air you breathing is our king and his name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. God, Yahweh, El Shaddai, he is our king. You are not greater than that. Can you imagine him saying that to him? And he looking and he say, I see a fourth like a son of God. And those you don't know, that was Jesus in the spiritual form. That's what he saw. This is the type of faith God is looking for right now in the time we're living in. I want y'all to understand it is important, important that if you don't have faith in God, please get faith and God now before it's too late. This pandemic has nothing on. Yes, people are dying. I I I I I, I had a pastor uh, uh, who 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 I know that 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 deal with. You know, he 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 went through this thing here and he talked about. It. I mean, man, it just bless my heart. Geno Jennings had the COVID nineteen, and I wish I could set it up and play it right now, but I don't have time to do it. And he talked about it, how it was all in his body, and it went through his children. Why? Because the man had faith in God. He said, "You know what? The Bible. It's the Bible. It said it's written by a man, but inspired by God. This word of God don't change. The Bible says the word of God be the same today, yesterday, and forevermore." 
heaven and earth will pass away, but my word is the same. This gospel, this word of God, this holy Bible is will keep you. It'll keep you from falling. It'll keep you from dying. It'll keep you from being sick. It'll keep you from going to hell. This word of God, this what he stands on. This what I stand on. And this what you should stand on. Man, I heard that Geno Jennings, man, how he went to COVID-19 and how he stood. Woo, Lord Jesus. The man stood and preached in the midst of that. Some of you say, oh, that's crazy. You a fool. What about you read and spreading everybody? No, he took all the precautions. He got up there and he preached that gospel. See, this is me. I don't care if I get COVID-19. It ain't going to stop me from preaching the gospel. It ain't going to stop me from doing God's word. If I got to crawl down on my knees and say, God, I still stand for you, even in the midst of this COVID-19. God, I still stand for you, even if my life is slipping away. I preach this gospel till I die. I ain't afraid to die. I ain't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For this is the gospel that saves lives. Some of us sit right here and we so afraid. We so scared. We can't even function right because we let this thing got us shaking. Oh, we so shaking. But then you say you have faith in God. You ride up and down the road doing 100 miles per hour trying to get home or you go out there and you, and you, and you, and you, and you go to those jobs where you, you can get killed. But when it's time to come with something, we scared. We afraid. I ain't afraid of nothing. Satan can come walking here right now and I cast him out and send us behind back to hell. Your faith got to be strong. Christian, believer, it's time to rise up. God's people, it's time for us to rise up and preach the gospel, share the gospel, throw that gospel to the people. Stop using idols and 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 these these uh, 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 idol gods you putting up on, doing all these things and 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 worshiping God. You worship your house, your home, your car, and then when something happens, you don't have no faith because you don't put faith in material idol and not in God. It's time for God's people to stand up. Show these world who our God is, that he's a great and powerful God. He ain't no weak, jellyback God. He ain't Islam. He, he, ain't, he ain't Muhammad. His name is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's who he is. All these gods they got. Our Jesus, hey, our Jesus Christ, he died and he resurrected. Muhammad's still in the ground. Buddha still in the ground, but our Jesus died and rise on the third day. While he was in Hades, he preached the gospel to those so they can get sent it to heaven. You show me a God that does that. You show me a God that tells you to, that, that we call father. He is our father and we are his children. Time for us to raise up church. Get your home in order, man. Woman, get right. Stop looking like Jezebel. Get on your knees. Pray for your husband. Pray for your husband. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Some of you women going out there preaching. God ain't call y'all preach. The Bible says a woman don't have a thought over man. Sit down there. The, here's the thing. You want to preach, but then the Bible say older women teach the younger women. And we got these younger women falling all out, dressing all kind of way, getting, having babies on the wet lot. We need the women to get up and grab these young girls and show them love and don't go on your feelings and emotion hurt, but give them the word of God. Tell them to be keepers on the home like the scripture say. Oh, we'll forget about that. And I'm telling you men, be a man. Stand up. Take care of your home. Stop making your wife work at five jobs and you sitting home chilling, playing video games, eating all the food. Get your behind and get to work. It's time for the man to stand up. It's time for the people of God to stand up. It's time for the believers to go out there and stand up. Here it is. I got brothers out there on the street preaching the gospel, sharing that gospel. And they out there doing tithes. And, and here it is. You got something to say. And you supposed to be a Christian. Where your faith at? Oh, I know y'all don't want to hear this. I know this is this stinging y'all, but this is the situation. This is why we're in the situation we're in right now. This is why we, 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 we getting this rejection because we don't know how to stand up. 
We don't have faith in God. We, we got faith in all the functions. We, we, we have faith. We'll go to church. We'll sing. We'll praise God. We'll go out there and talk about the word. Oh, man, we'll get together and talk about Jesus. But then you go home, you sit up there and you watch TV. Some of y'all watching porn. Some of y'all listen to Jay-Z. Some of y'all smoking marijuana. Some of y'all drinking liquor. Some of y'all getting high. Some of y'all cheating and fornicating. Some of y'all sitting up there masturbating. Some of y'all doing all this. But you, then when you try to step out on faith, then you wonder why you fall on slap on your face. Repent, get right, and turn it from your wicked ways. It's time for the church to rise up and put your faith in the almighty God, a God who is the keeper. The Bible says he's the first and last. The Bible says he's the alpha and omega. The Bible says he is the all in all. And far the east and from the west. That's how God is, no end. And we got the greatest power of God in the world. But yet we act like he powerless. We act like that. He he don't even he don't even have. We're like our God is so weak. Then you wonder why the world is putting us down. Here it is. You 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 call yourself a Christian. I don't call myself a Christian. A Christian. I call myself a believer. I believe and stand on the word. The Bible said the believer. But in the in the in the in the book of Revelation, they call them the followers of the way. We so called Americanized Christian. I got a brother all the way from Pakistan calling me. They ain't even beg for no money. All he want to do is preach the gospel. And they over there feeding the hungry, taking care of the widows, and we can't even do that in here. We so stingy and so mean and, and so ungrateful. And you know what that brother told me? He said prayer is what we need. The gospel, the word of God, this is what we need to feed the souls of the people, not money. But the word of God, you know what kind of man of God? I know this brother, man of God, when he have to say something like that, when he says things he says, when he go out there every day and devote, devote his life preaching the word of God. Do you devote your life preaching the word of God or do you devote your life going to work, hanging around, smoking, drinking? Oh, well, I'm just going to go to church and high five everybody. You know what I'm saying? No, you devote your life to Christ. You preach that gospel. You share that gospel. You witness but we don't want to do that. Here it is. The Bible said you take care of the, the poor and needy. The Bible said you close me. Here it is. And that's what it is. Taking care of the poor and needy. We don't even take care of our widows. And yes, I do have a problem when a, girl, a young lady get pregnant. She ain't married. And we have a baby shower. You don't need to have no baby shower. Somebody need to be sitting down there talking to behind to keep your leg closed until you get married. And get yourself right with God. Got these young girls walking around here all pregnant, don't even have a first husband or a first name or a last name. These young guys think they doing something, spitting their seed all over everywhere. Well, I'm a man. No, a man a, 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 a man will follow Christ and put Christ first. He'll marry that woman. Then they have children. And this is sad. Pregnancy, teen pregnancy is so high right now because now we don't have the younger women to teach the older women. And we don't have an older man to teach the younger men. Being a man is not having a child and, 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 and any man can and, and make a baby, but it takes a real man to take care of a baby. I thank God for my daughter, 21 years old, still a virgin, waiting for that right person to come. She's saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. If the brother, if a man can take time to spend time with his daughter and teach her the right way, then we wouldn't have all this. If the mother wouldn't get over there and cover and love these, these young girls and, and teach them to be women and teach them to say, baby, wait till you get married. First, get a closer relationship with God. The Bible say when a man find a woman, he find a good thing and he obtain faith with the Lord. Not when a woman find a man, but when a man find a woman. You got some of these women so bold out here, they'll go out there and talk to the man. I see women getting on one knee, asking the man to marry him. That's not even biblical. time for us to wake up church oh it's time for us to wake up I know some of y'all don't like this oh y'all don't like this at all but that's alright don't care if you like it or not I'm not here for likes I'm not here to make friends I'm not here trying to build up a Facebook page and have all followers hey if God opened that door praise God if you don't praise God but I'm going to preach it the truth whether you like it or not 
I'm getting tired of every time I turn around, I see my fellow brothers and sisters dying, going to hell, getting beat up, getting scuffed up. They were beating them down because nobody want to take time to minister to them. Here it is. They come to you. Well, I ain't got time. But you got time to go out there and watch the football game. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Guess what? Lord took your football game. Oh, oh, took your basketball game. Oh, took your soccer. Oh, took your hockey. He took all that. So this is what you should be doing. You should be sharing that gospel. Well, we can't do it. We, we on a stay-at-home order. When they teach it to your children and your wife. Get on Facebook. I'm so glad to see people on Facebook. I'm talking about the real people sharing real gospel. I ain't talking about the one that's trying to get up there and trying to make a name for themselves and say, oh, look, I'm on Facebook. No, I'm talking about the one that's preaching truth. And I so, so get tired of seeing the one always taking pictures and, oh, look, no. Get up there and preach that gospel. I ain't going to do Facebook. Facebook, that's the devil's tool. Well, turn it and use it for God's glory. You do everything else. You post everything else. So what's the difference? Time to have faith in God. It's going to come a time where you're going to have to make, you're going to have to make a decision. Is you going to die for this gospel or you going to, either you're going to, can you take persecution or you die. The Bible says the devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. Notice kill first. Why the devil want to kill you? Because he know if he if you stay long enough, you'll get right with God. So he want to kill you so he can take you to hell. He want to steal everything you have. Then he want to destroy you. But God said, I come to give life more abundantly. You know, when it comes to this word of God, you ain't going to get no, 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 no. This is all you're going to get. I ain't going to get no less. I, I refuse. Right now, I, I can't even, you know, I can't even see myself doing nothing else. I can't. I can't see myself going back in the world. It's so easy, so easy to go back in the world. That's one of the things I see. It's so easy to go back in the world. Why is it so easy, RPI? Because the devil want to make sure that it's easy to go back in the world, but it's a work to get back with God. It's a work. You have to do more. You have to pray. Why? Because the Bible say that we was born, born we were born in a, a, a sin and shaped in iniquity because of Adam. Our sinful nature always wants to sin. It's easy to sin. You know how it is? You don't teach your child to sin. You don't have to teach your child to steal or, or fight. But you got to teach them to do right. Why? Because it's in our nature. And yes, it's going to be time where we're going to fall short. Yes, it's going to be time where things going to get tough. But we have to get our focus right with God. Faith is the only thing that's going to keep you. If I have faith in myself, I, I, I'd have been dead. 46 years ago. <laughs> and I'm 46 now. Everything I do, the Bible says, be ye perfect as what? My father in heaven be perfect. You looking at a perfect man right now. Oh, I can't believe you say that. You're right, I did say it. But then myself, no, I'm nowhere near perfect. But through Jesus Christ, I am perfect. Through the my through God, I am perfect. Through Yahweh, I am perfect. I never be perfect on myself, but through him. Through God. Do El Shaddai, Ashur, I'm perfect through him. The Bible says, be ye holy as I am holy. I'm holy not through my, listen, there's nothing holy in me. There's nothing holy in Patrick Isaac. But there's everything holy through Jesus Christ that lives in Patrick Isaac. That's the holy thing. This body is just a shell. There's nothing this body can do without Christ. At the snap of his hand, I can fall apart and die. If God take a half of a second of a second of a second of a second to take his time, his breath away, I would die. Everything that we doing. And you think about this. Here it is. We serve a God who not only bless the saved, but in the unsaved. You unsaved people that are listening to this radio station. 
You don't know God. Everything you do is because of him. Every life and breath you leave is because of him. Everything because of why? Because he loves you. He don't want to see you die. So why would you not serve a God that still love you in your imperfection? He still love you in, 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 in your sin, in your fornication, in your adultery, even in, 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 in your homosexuality, even in, in the uh, 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 pedophilia. He still loves you. There's time to fix you. Oh, I can't believe you said, yes, pedophilia, they need help too. You don't could send them die and go to hell because everything ain't like that. People go through things. They've been parlor, been uh, 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 been molested as a child. They need help too. They need Jesus too, just like a homosexual. Everybody need help. Your government ain't gonna help you. Your counsel ain't gonna help you. But God can't help you. For God say, I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. <laughs> Lord, can't give me words that. He'll never forsake you. He'll never leave you. This is the God we serve. This is the God we have faith in. This is the God that keeps us. I heard a lady say, where was Jesus? Where was, where was, where was Jesus at when my son got killed? Where was he at? Where was God at? Where was God when my son died and, and he murdered and this guy killed him? Where was God? I remember pastor looking at that lady and say the same place when his son was sitting on the cross getting persecuted, getting whipped, getting all that done to him in that same place. Listen, guys, my time is about up. <sighs> thank you, Jesus. I truly thank y'all for listening to In the Last Days. I am the host of the show, RPI. Radio well, cause, Pastor Isaac. Tune in next Tuesday at 7 p.m. or 6.30 p.m. on In the Last Days. My final words, have faith in God. God bless. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was mean. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, 